this field, she begins to have an ability, and this ability is to transport into the 1960s, seeped into the London scene, where she is an aspiring dancer, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, but things start to unravel and become not as glitz and glamour as they seem. It always excites me when a very well-established director dips their hand into a whole other genre unlike anything they've done before. It's a nice hypothetical to think about. I mean, think about if Christopher Nolan decided to do a horror film or Ari Aster decided to do a dark comedy. I mean, if you're sadistic, then I guess you can maybe think Hereditary and Midsommar are dark comedies, but then I would say you need help. I guess what I'm saying, though, is it's always so interesting and manages to just make me so happy when I see directors try their hand at something new. Now, it doesn't always work, and when I heard that Edgar Wright was making a horror film, I was very skeptical, but I was also very excited. So how does it fare? Well, I'll say this. I had a great time watching The Last Night in Soho, and where Edgar Wright has succeeded at his most visually with his flair and style, it translates into here. However, I will say this is by far his most toned down movie. For a long period of the movie, I was, I was very much thinking to myself, wow, he is really reserving himself. He isn't going for a very quick, fast-paced editing style that quickly cuts and breaks the conventional norms that editors would abide by and actually goes for a self-contained story. Until you have Eloise, played by Thomas and Mackenzie, transport herself into the 60s, and that's when all hell breaks loose. I have always, since a very young age, been disturbed and freaked out by the realism of life. I mean, don't get me wrong, ghosts, goblins, ghouls, vampires, werewolves, you name it, they can be scary, uh, but I'm always freaked out by what is tangible, what is real, and I think Edgar Wright very much harnesses that within what women view as the true scares in this world and the true predators and i'm not going to go too deep into the film's central horror but it does work and i think in a lot of ways there is an installation of fear based off of how edgar wright is so diligent with how he approaches the source material now i will say there is bits of the movie that i'm not the biggest fan of this is by far edgar wright's worst written movie and it's sad because I remember so vividly each of his films having such exciting dialogue and you can just chew on every line and visually there's so many good gags. But this, there is some cringe-inducing moments. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to get very spoiler-heavy or talk too negative. But I will say my one big issue would be that perhaps the writing makes it seem a little bit more deeper than it is. Uh, and Edgar Wright is known for his visual but there's like a moment in the movie where something sudden happens <laughs> it's like the character talking to the main character is like looking at the camera and it's like this is what happened A and B and C and this person was this person and it was so unnatural I laughed so freaking hard but other than that I had a great time Thomas and Mackenzie as Eloise this young hungry talent who has a lot to offer but is so sadly being terrified and weighed down by these nightmares is fantastic it is a hard role to sell and she does it and then of course you have the beautifully charismatic Anya Taylor-Joy who isn't given very much because it is on the back of Thomas and Mackenzie's Eloise but she has a level of, of coolness, and her disposition is always one that best embodies her character. But yeah, this is Thomas and Mackenzie's film through and through. I'm not trying to undersell the sequences of the 60s because it is beautiful. That is when Edgar Wright really has his playground of toys to play with. And he shows all of the budget can most notably be found in those flashbacks and the way the 
camera is just able to flow and move with such a rhythm to itself in those moments where you have Anya Taylor-Joy's Sandy and then Eloise Thomas and Mackenzie back and forth in these moments, you would think it would be green screen, but surprisingly, a lot of it is done practically, which I think further adds to Edgar Wright's brilliance. And there is moments of tension. You could just feel it rising and rising, which I think is kind of interesting because I've heard a common criticism being that of the third act, just taking it into overdrive. But I thought it actually was a great addition because the movie is just a whole rising sense of claustrophobia and tension and insanity and then the third act just explodes that i just felt that to be fitting now yeah like i said my main issue is just within the writing and there is a bit more character depth that i wish was there but for what we got i had a great time i'm not going to be rushing out to go see this movie but i'm always there day one for directors who have made a name for themselves in a certain field or style doing something polar opposite it's great and these movies i love them especially in the horror realm they're not nearly enough of just original concepts being made on such a high budget and having a faith in an audience to enjoy it and it's sad because i'm seeing such high elevated directors who have made incredible names for themselves for decades like ridley scott with the last duel or edgar wright with the last night and so and a lot of these major budget films not succeeding so if you have the ability to go check it out with all that being said a great cast of characters thomas and mackenzie at her best she's gonna do some incredible things edgar wright just letting loose having fun it going full 11 out of 10 with the craziness scale it's it's an insane time i'm gonna give it a b yeah it really is a lot of fun of course there's issues here and there and it's by far edgar wright's worst film but that's like saying you watched the worst toby mcguire spider-man film i mean the worst toby mcguire spider-man film is still leagued better than any tom holland film i'm just gonna leave that there i'm not gonna start anything i'm not gonna that's all i'm gonna say but it's great i mean i had so much fun with the movie and i hope down the line more creative liberties from studios will be taken and i'm not just saying from reputable directors but from new timers as well stories like this where they break the convention of the horror genre is awesome i have to thank ori aster for that and so many of these other filmmakers and there's a lot coming out that i'm so excited for but have you seen the last night in soho what you think have you found a movie this year that you felt really just tried to break the mold of the genre that it's in and do something new like last night in soho drop it down in the comments as always thank you very much for watching stay tuned for videos that's coming up soon my name is cinephile asmr and remember